Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. I want to start the show with a big shout out to all the single or solo parents out there. I've been doing it three days and I want to die. You say that every time you're stuck with a kid. It's different when they're older, man. It's different. It's uh, in some ways it's easier, you know, can really like play with them and all that sort of stuff. And in other ways, my God, putting together the lunches and the snacks and the bedtime and the bath and the, oh my God, I'm going to die. Someone <sighs> needs a nanny. Get that man a nanny. I need a manny. That's right. Oh, so sorry to hear that, Brian. It's all right. I'm surviving and the wife is coming home shortly, so I do not live in this all time. But uh, for those of you that do, I salute you. Man, that's hard. <laughs> okay, so when I went with you up to uh, the fire, was it, was it fire? No, it wasn't fireside, was it? Fireside chat or fireside conference or whatever, you know, not, not, not the stupid app. Not the stupid app, yes. Uh, you took me to Tim Hortons and I got my first breakfast sandwich there and yes. I thought it was delicious. Mm -hmm. And now, I, now I'm very upset because they have partnered with uh, Justin Bieber yes. to make the Tim Biebs. And yes. I just, what have you done, Brian? I leave you up there for what? Four months, and, you, and you're doing this shit? Come on. It gets worse. <laughs> okay. okay. It gets worse because in, in a push to, to up, up their game and, and seem like more of a premier product, uh, Tim Hortons has uh, decided to uh, replace their breakfast sandwich eggs with freshly cracked eggs, and they're horrible. They're absolutely <laughs> horrible. I don't care that they did a series of test markets and closely monitored and studied for guest satisfaction. I don't care that it's supposedly healthier or better or fresher. They taste like crap. I want my old breakfast sandwich back with the reconstituted eggs or whatever they use. This is typical. I move here and now I hate it. The one thing I was looking forward to was regular Tim Horton breakfast sandwiches. I've had one and I will not go back unless they go back to their old crappy eggs. Give me powdered eggs or give me death. That's right. <laughs> Maybe I'll make my own. <laughs> I'm going to order it without eggs and come back and make my own powdered eggs. There you go. That's solution. Save you some money, too. Yeah. And speaking of things that are just still plain horrible, Uber. Yes. Uh, Uber, Uber's in the news because the uh, Department of Justice has charged them with uh, uh, making old people and disabled people pay more money. Because if you're slow, you get dinged on the Uber. I saw that. That is a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? They should have some sort of button, don't you think? <laughs> it mm -hmm. says, this yes. person is disabled and will take a little bit longer to get into the Uber. And we will not charge them for that. Yeah, the only time you should get charged for taking a little while to get into your Uber is if you forgot your luggage or if you're drunk. You know, yes. <laughs> legitimate wait. But yeah, if somebody is, you know, if somebody's coming down in a wheelchair and they got to go in the car. But, you know, we do have the discrimination from them before where uh, the drivers were... Uh, you know, not picking people up who were disabled or blind. We had mm -hmm. that one before. So, yep. yeah, this is just, you know, a continuance of yeah. Uber's horrificness. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I actually took an Uber for the first time in, oh, gosh, must be at least two years uh, the other week. It was expensive. Very, yeah. very expensive. Yeah, I, <laughs> I remember that Uber when we were in Toronto going to Fireside, actually. Right. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I tried to forget about it, but it comes back in my nightmares every now and again. Yeah, that guy yeah. just did not look at the road. No, he did not. Uh, I, I was just going to say what I do like about Toronto is there's still a, a awful lot of legit, real cabbies around. The problem is we've all gotten spoiled to being picked up exactly like where we are, when we want, and all that sort of thing. If only the taxi drivers could do the app. I don't understand what's the problem. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. Because, yeah, I mean, that's what Uber fixed was the fact that you could never get a cab in San Francisco. That was, I mean, yeah. that's what started them. You know, mm -hmm. try and get a cab in San Francisco back then. You just can't. You can't. You ordered all three and one maybe would show up 45 minutes late. Yeah. So <laughs> it was a godsend back then. But yeah, if we just need the taxi companies to use the app. But anyway, speaking of other things that are still horrible uh, behind the wheel on the road, mm -hmm. we've said it before. Mm -hmm. Full self-driving beta from Tesla is a bad idea when put in the hands of fucking civilians. Hey, update, Jason. Okay. Uh, self-driving cars. 
20 years away now. <laughs> still 20 years. <laughs> yeah, still 20 years away. Yep. Beep, beep, beep. This just beep, in. Breaking news. <laughs> breaking news from the past. Yes. Uh, so a Tesla Model Y in full st- full self-driving beta crashed on November 3rd in uh, Brea, which mm-hmm. is around here. Yep. Yeah. So uh, the NHTSA is investigating again. But uh, yeah. I love this. Here's, according to the report, the vehicle was in FSD beta mode, and while taking a left turn, the car went into the wrong lane, and I was hit by another driver in the lane next to my lane. The car gave an alert halfway through the turn, so I tried to turn the wheel to avoid it from going into the wrong lane, but the car, by itself, took control and forced itself into the incorrect lane, creating an unsafe maneuver, putting everyone involved at risk. Okay, yeah. Get the shit off the fucking road. Let, let me fix that for you. Uh, the car didn't hit you. You hit the car. Let's start with that. Because you swerved into the other lane. I think it's time for a class action lawsuit, which is the entire world against Tesla. I, I, look, I, I'm a shareholder still. I, I don't know why, because Elon Musk makes me pull my hair out on a daily basis uh, at this point, and, and I can't stand what they're doing. I, I can't fathom releasing beta software and putting it out on, on the roads with everybody else. It's irresponsible. It's stupid. And yes, I, I do think they need to be sued. I agree. I'm with you. I'm, I'm on board. Okay. Every week, you you uh, you have this bout of ethics, and you say, "I'm going to get rid of my Tesla. I'm going to get rid of my Tesla." Yet you still have it. I also have a bout if I want to retire well. If if everybody sues, then there goes your nest egg. <laughs> I sold Facebook. Baby steps. Baby steps. Well, how long did it take you to get rid of your Facebook? How long to get rid of? <laughs> you know, come on. We know that you're slow on the trigger. You want to do the right thing, but greed greed has taught you that uh, maybe you just want to stick in there for a little bit longer. <laughs> Daddy so. wants a Palm Springs retirement house. In the news. Okay, Putin, what the fuck? I saw this. I just saw this in the news. Yeah. Yeah. Woke up this morning to find out the uh, the astronauts on the ISS had to huddle for safety because Russia decided to blow up two of its own satellites in a uh, uh, missile test. Now, here's the way Star Wars is supposed to work, Russia. You you fire the (laughs) missile, and it actually hits the satellite. You don't throw up a big goddamn bomb, explode it somewhere in the vicinity of the satellite, and then create a huge debris cloud. Just saying. I guess they're taking the stormtrooper approach. Shoot near the (laughs) object. (laughs) Exactly. Just keep shooting until something hits something. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah, this is bad. This is bad because... Yeah. (laughs) You know, and I'm like, why are we still testing satellite weaponry? I mean, really? And then I got to thinking about it and I'm like, hmm. Okay, Russia, authoritarian regime. United States has fucking SpaceX and all their shit. And now we are, you know, we've got to deal with Elon Musk putting up Starlink satellites. So the Internet is no longer ground based, which means it is not in the control of the authoritarian regimes. So... If their people start to get space internet, what do they want to be able to do? Shoot Knock it down. out the space internet. Shoot it down. And uh, that's the only thing I can think. I mean, yeah, there's other you know targets, military satellites and things like that. But if you get into a shooting war in space, basically what's going to happen is just like every other sci-fi book, uh, we're going to be trapped on this planet and have to live in the fucking meta space that Zuckerberg created because we can't get off this rock because there's too much space junk and all the spaceships blow up when we send them up there. Agreed. I've read the books. Me too. And look, Russia, if you want to get some goodwill, I'm, I'm just saying shooting down Linksys uh, routers in space is not going to get you goodwill. You want to get goodwill? Put up some printers. Shoot those down. Everybody hates printers. Uh, and uh, this one is just too funny to pass up. The U.S. government made it illegal to buy these NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been going slightly crazy because the news has been out because NFT sales are through the roof, right? Like they're just massive. And then you read the stories going 99% of the sales. Well, eh, yeah, laundering money. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And uh, <laughs> our next next story is science proves that NFTs are worthless for the most part because only 1% of NFTs sell for more than $1,500 and 75% sell for $15 or less. Even mm-hmm. worse, the majority of these pieces don't even sell. 
So they don't even so, enter the analysis. Yes. So when you see those stats about the massive amounts of sales of NFTs, you've got to remember it's like five of them that sold for a shit ton of money and a whole shitload that don't sell at all. Yep. Yep. Because, yeah, the big boys are moving money around. And, you know, even that one, it was like last week I saw it come through the wire, like somebody had the biggest NFT sale and it sold it back to itself. It was going back and forth just because they wanted the the numbers to be up to say they had the biggest NFT sale. It's like, yeah. dude, <laughs> it's all yeah, a joke. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's just a seriously stupid thing. And I know everybody says, if you watch the news, they're the next big thing. But, you know. Come Look, on, seriously. I've, I, I've thought a little bit about this uh, a bit more recently. I, I've had to for work-related things and, and things of that nature. And, and there is I, – I get it. I really do. I, I, I don't because I'm old and I'm not a digital native, but I do get it for digital natives. They didn't grow up collecting anything physical. They, they don't care about physical stuff. So there is something to this in the same way that there was something to baseball trading cards and and all that sort of stuff and pokemon cards and and all that crap that that we did it's just gone digital now so a tiny little market for cheap prices to get a little piece of digital artwork sure i get it the stupid crap that's happening now nope yeah see here's the thing the the way that nfts should be working is not how they are working you know, mm -hmm. right now it is a kludge tacked on to the Ethereum blockchain run by, you know, separate blockchains that, that have the authenticity and crap like that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know how they work right now. And it's terrible. It's a basically you buy a link. You buy a link that can go away at any time. On a distributed Excel spreadsheet. Yes. But they, I mean, nobody really thought out the tech for this long term. It's like, OK, if I want to buy an NFT in World of Warcraft and transport that NFT to another platform, we need interoperability and things like that. That is the goal, I'm guessing, from all of these. So if I buy a digital asset, it is mine. It is, you know, if an artist create a set of armor for me, I can buy that armor and I can transfer it to different avatars and different games in perpetuity forever. It ain't there yet. And nobody's right. even I don't even think thinking about that part yet. No, but, no. Right now, it's a money grab. That's all. It's people all are a money just grab. rushing yeah. to get the get the the tools out there so that they can sell people on minting NFTs and trading NFTs and buying NFTs. But there's no thought about the long term game. It's just let's get something up there right now because this stuff is hot and we can get our ducats. Yep, pretty much, pretty much. And moving away from NFTs, let's talk about Facebook for a second. Oh, must we? Yes, we must, because it turns out there is an exodus coming from Facebook right now. People have finally, I guess the great resignation has hit Facebook because lots of people are leaving and uh, recruiters are trying to get them new jobs. But uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see how it works if they're if they're going to be getting new jobs. I'm sure, you know, a good portion of them will land because everybody is, you know, talent poor right now. Yep. But uh I think yeah, most of them I'm, are going to land on their feet. I mean, some people are going to have some stink on them, but those aren't the people that are leaving Facebook. I think they know that <laughs> and they're going to stay and and milk that paycheck and and be horrible. But I mean, if you're if you're a, a, a good engineer, if you're a good programmer, if you're good, uh, just if you're talented in general, and you've been sucking on that Facebook teat and taking that paycheck, now seems like a really good time to leave, right? I would. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I'm I'm glad they're finally coming to their senses. You know, we've I, we've mentioned it before, but we now we have some proof from the recruiters that saying that uh, yeah, they're they're yeah. showing up in droves now. They want to get yep. out, uh, but uh, they are trying. Facebook is trying to you know have some more goodwill. They're starting to get rid of some of their super hyper targeting in their ads. Uh huh. I heard that. Yeah, you can no longer uh, micro target on uh, racist terms. That's nice. <laughs> Thanks, Gee, great. Hey, thanks for getting around to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's basically, uh, uh, what is it? Options referring to causes, organizations, or public figures that relate to health, race, or ethnicity, political affiliation, religion, or sexual orientation. Yes. So, Last time you ever clicked on a Facebook ad? Been years for me. Yeah, years for me too. But uh, I know that a lot of people still do. I mean, a lot of small businesses live and die by those Facebook ads. True. So It's true. Yeah, some people are going to have to be shucking and jiving here. I mean, the whole ad market is getting upended right now. So between Apple uh, having, you know, basically the uh, 
the stranglehold on everybody's nuts as far as data goes and the ethics of everybody else getting caught out in the wind saying that, uh, yeah, everything we've done has destroyed democ- democracy and made the world a worse place. Um, things are getting shaken up quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I agreed. So Mount Gox is back in the news as well. They, mm-hmm. uh, they have, uh, uh, they, the trustee has announced approval for 150,000 Bitcoin rehabilitation plan. Okay. <laughs> They're going to rehabilitate. Told me to took my Bitcoin, Bitcoin to rehab. I said, no, no, hodl. <laughs> hodl, hodl, hodl. Uh, yeah. This is out of the 850,000 Bitcoin that were stolen. <laughs> right. So, something, something. Um, it's something. Okay. It is something. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, armchair. Just, uh, oh, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, that's it. I just get a kick out of it. Okay. It's like, and speaking of silly coins, Armchair Rambo wrote in, The Brave Token is on a roll. Decided against cashing my $35 in for a gift card. I'm holding. And if you say hodling, I will punch you in the mouth. Keep keeping on. And this is the <laughs> basic attention token up 25% following Brave Solana integration. You do you, Armchair Rambo. Mambo. Hodl. Hodl. I particularly like this tidbit of news that's meant to make us feel better. In October, Brave Search became the default search engine in the browser, replacing Google. Yes, in a brave move, Brave announced that the Brave browser would use Brave Search by default. How brave of them. Wow, it made the news that they decided to use their own search engine in their own browser. Yeah, this is coming from... Uh, yeah, I, I feel really guilty about Pimp and Brave in the past. Back in I the really day, do. yeah. Because, uh, man... Yeah, Brendan Ike is shit in the bed over there, which is fine by me because he's a douchebag and I hate him. But uh, yeah, I can't in good faith ever say use the Brave browser now, even after, you know, the the cryptocurrency thing at the beginning. And now it is completely tied to crypto. Everything is crypto and Brave and uh, you can't turn it off. I still unfortunately have it on my iPhone and my iPads because it's the only way I can sync my my bookmarks easily. But I'm going to try and figure something else out because, man, I just I don't want to give them any attention whatsoever that is positive. <laughs> but, but, but you yeah. can make some basic attention token. Yeah, bat. You have to be batshit crazy. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Uh, I found this one over at Medium. Mm-hmm. The 10 websites that track you the most. And I just thought it was funny that uh, your, your uh, website, Ladibble, or, or Lad Bible, as you like to call it, is, is up there. I actually uh, unfollowed them a long time ago because they just got way too clickbaity, and obviously they're just uh, they're just going down that path now. And that slot is way up there, and the chive not surprising. Yeah, yeah, the chive one hundred and forty three trackers, Salon one hundred and thirty nine, New York Daily News one twenty six, HGTV needs one hundred and twenty one trackers. Why? They're they don't. Why? They don't need them. They just Crooks and Liars them. at 116, Barstool Sports at 116, Ladibble at 114, Ad Week at 112, Refinery 29 at 111, and USA Today, Tomorrow of the World at 104. So That's a lot of trackers. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, though, on the least side, Wikipedia and TikTok are tied for the least at three. Well, pretty good. Instagram's even down there. That's nice. Instagram. Yeah, what? You'd figure. FB Messenger is even down there with five because hmm. that's all they need. That's, that's true they know where you are <laughs> yeah they, they just suck it in for themselves everybody else is uh you know on their own whatever yeah. and God. speaking of instagram vincent wrote in only six weeks till christmas why does he have to tell me that what will they think of next get a meta tattoo and you might win an imaginary trip to mars you heard it here first and this is the uh, story that's out there about sharing a pet photo and planting a tree on instagram which is bullshit okay Shocking. <laughs> Uh, they actually, they, they, uh, this, uh, this company called plant a tree co used Instagram's new feature ad years, which rolled out on the application the day before and allowed users to contribute to a thread in the stories feature. Uh, they quickly gained traction with their posts, basically saying, if you share a picture of your dog, we'll plant a tree. Then they realized we can't plant that many trees and tried to shut it down. <laughs> We immediately realized the post would grow too big and we didn't have the resources to plant that many trees, so we deleted it 10 minutes later. Even though we deleted it a week later out of nowhere, the stories continued to spread out of our control, reaching millions of reposts. So uh, now they're like, uh, whoops, we screwed that up. (laughs) So no, they're not going to be planting trees for your pup. Sorry. They screwed up. Uh, They couldn't do it. Man, this is what happens when something truly goes viral. However... What they're doing now is they're trying to raise funds to help plant 4 million trees. So in addition, <laughs> so instead of 
posting your puppy and getting a tree planted, you can give them money and they'll plant a tree. What the fuck? <laughs> Come this, on. Is the, this story is the internet in a nutshell. It really is. Like, fuck Ugh. everything. Ending on some good news, Portugal has now made it illegal for your boss to text you after work in a game-changer remote work law. Euronews calls it a game-changer, bro. But, yeah, uh, I, I thought this was already in effect. Um, was it France that did this already? I think so. It was France that uh, we talked about at least two years ago where they, they put that rule in effect that said, you know, you couldn't you couldn't reach out to your employees after hours. So Yeah. Yeah. I think it was email-based, so... That's but, good. Look, uh, life, life work balance is important and it's, it's gone out the window with COVID and, uh, you know, we got to, we got to get it back. Uh, if we're going back to work, we got to get back life work balance. It's just, uh, people cannot work themselves to death for nothing. It's crazy. Media candy. Well, Brian, I was thinking last week about the Orville and whatever happened to that show. Mm -hmm. We still don't have one. It's scheduled <laughs> for maybe sometime next year. Right. So we'll see. Will it even be relevant anymore? Who knows? I just, uh, I just, I missed that show. As we were talking about fun shows last week and I, I just kind of missed the Orville. I thought that was a good, good, solid show. I might have to actually... Give it and, and watch it at some point. I, I remember watching the first episode and hating it, but it is what it is. I'm sure I can get past it. Yeah, it got better. It's kind of like Lower Decks. It gets okay. better. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I watched Another Life Season 2, so you don't have to. Oh, it's that bad? No, it's it's not horrible. It's, it's perfectly serviceable sci-fi. I actually liked the story. Uh, the problem I have with it, and God knows I love you, Katie Sackoff, but... Man, the acting is just horrible. Horrible. Not so much her, but yeah. everybody else. It's just bad. But I mean, Another Life Season 1 had horrible acting. I it know. It was terrible, too. I know. And I sat You kind of know it. what you're getting when you go into this, you know? That's true. Well, it's like crapper sci-fi, right? Like like in our At the Library segments. It's, it's just simple, quick, super fast sci-fi, and it's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, Foundation, though, on the other hand, I've actually started to enjoy now that it's almost over. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've caught up. Um, I, I, there's the last episode is coming out this Friday, I believe. And, um, it's, it's, uh, it, I'm enraged actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish they left the whole foundation aspect out of it. Like just make a sci-fi show because this is not foundation at all. None of this stuff happened. It's crazy, but it's pretty decent sci-fi. I'm with you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not actually a bad show once you kind of get past the fact that it's not the books that it's, you know, purported to be. <laughs> so. You know what? We we need some kind of new technology. You know how back in the day I used to say that I, all I want from AI is to make sure that the Red Hot Chili Peppers never play on my car radio. Yeah. Now I want AI to replace Harry Seldon's name in the show with Bob Smith. <laughs> And if AI just did Bob Smith says instead of Harry Seldon, I'd probably be okay with this. Okay, you can't use Bob though because I got the, we got the Bobiverse. We can't mix those two. Oh up. yeah, the Bobiverse. That's that's yeah. Well, that's never going to get made into a TV show. Shenanigan Charlie. We'll call him Shenanigan Charlie. Right. How's that? Perfect. There. <laughs> then I'm then I'm fine with. Okay. It. Uh, for some reason, my roommate got me to start watching the show You on Netflix because mm -hmm. lots of people have been talking about season three that it's out now. Um. Well, in watching you, I found me is very bored. <laughs> I think it is very boring. It doesn't very, look like your boring. kind of show. Yeah, no, I can't see you. Well, there's supposed to be that. serial killers and shit, you know. But this this is like like General Hospital meets Dexter, but more mm -hmm. General Hospital than Dexter. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm unfortunately forced to watch this one, so I will I will be mocking it as we go. Hopefully, it will get pick up and get better. Okay, but. Um, and I did see there is a trailer out for the Three Body Problem TV show mm -hmm. produced by Tencent over in China. Right. Yeah. And I don't even have to speak Chinese to watch this and go, oh, they fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, did, okay. you, did you watch it? <laughs> no, I haven't watched the trailer yet. Oh, you should watch it. It's entertaining. It is okay. very entertaining. It's very high budget. And uh, I don't remember any of that shit from the book. So maybe <laughs> they, they're doing a foundation. They the foundation yeah. people. 
I don't know, but I, I was just like, oh, this is going to be a clusterfuck. I don't need, like I said, I don't even need to speak Mandarin to know that this is going to suck. <laughs> well, I, I took a quick trip to Sweden and I watched No Time to Die, the new Bond film, mm -hmm. uh, to which I can just say it is time to let Bond die or reinvent <laughs> him, her, they completely. Uh, this was an utter snooze fest. I couldn't believe it kept going. Uh, I didn't care about anything. Uh, it's just such a remnant of a past time. It, it, it's time to do something different. It's just done better by other people without using the Bond name now. Okay. Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't watched it yet. I did go to Sweden as well. But then I saw that it was available for rent on Apple TV now. So mm. I might just – if I'm going to watch it, I'll just pay for it and get it there. Right. Because, like, you know, like we always say, if, if it is if available easy, to purchase – Yes. If it's yep, easy, we do I'll, it. Yep. I'll press the button. Um, I do have a little musical thing for about four people in the audience. <laughs> There's a new face-to-face -face album out called No Way Out But Through. It is very face to facey. If you're into that band, every like 10 years or so, they come back with another album that sounds like the previous albums, which is fine by me because I like all their other albums. So right. if you're a face to face fan, you're in luck. All right. Well, I also have some uh, an, an old artist with some new music. Sting has a new single out called Rushing Water and a new album coming. This is not Loot Sting. This is Good Sting. And I am pleasantly surprised. I really enjoy the single. It's much better than I thought it would be. Okay, cool. Yeah. Is it is it anything police like? Uh, more like his early solo work. You know, it's it's not as not as uh, cutting and punky. It's 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 polished adult pop. Okay, I was at uh, Trader Joe's the other day, and they were playing the police on the the PA system. I think they were mm -hmm. playing "Don't Stand So Close to Me." Yeah, and uh, there was a seventy year old woman in the uh, the vegetable aisle, like checking out uh, tomatoes and dancing. Yep. <laughs> it, was, yep. it was very that's, cute. She, was, the she demo. was digging it. Uh, and there is a new Alanis Morissette documentary coming out yes. called Jagged. Yes. This is the one that she uh, she participated in and then later decided that, no, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Yeah, yeah. Do you, can, do you know anything about it? Do you, can you shed some light? Uh, I don't. I, I Just what I've read in, in the news. Um, I'm interested in watching it because I was involved with her at this point. And well, it depends on how far into her career they go, but uh, I'm curious about it. I'm curious to see what it is that she didn't like about it that made her distance herself from it. So we'll see. I will be watching it. Yeah, definitely. Me too. I was a fan. And uh, one of the best shows I ever saw was her at the Chicago theater that you got me tickets for. So thank you for that. <laughs> She's a very good live performer. I, I must oh my say. God. So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Uh, I do have to say a little shame on the Washington Post for their URL choice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, slash Alanis I saw that. <laughs> dash Morissette dash rape dash HBO. Alanis raped HBO. <laughs> Way to keyword stuff it there, Washington Post. Yeah, good job there. Ups and doodads. I got an email this week about my masterclass subscription renewing soon, and it said, uh, "Yeah, you get the all you can eat. It's going to cost you one hundred and eighty dollars." I'm like, "Yeah, I like masterclass for sitting in bed at night, and I'll pop one on the TV and watch it." But I'm like. It ain't $180 worth of entertainment. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no. So I canceled. And of right. course, immediately, they're like, ho, 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 please, please, please don't leave. Would you like 50% off? I'm like, $90 a year is well worth the entertainment. <laughs> so <laughs> there's another quick tip. If you want to renew your masterclass, just quit and they'll give you half off. Yeah, sounds much easier than the Sirius XM version where you have to call and argue forever but then you eventually get it cheaper yeah no it's not even worth it yeah. no serious xm no <laughs> uh and i love this ios uh, beta 15.2 beta 2 lets you actually turn on the uh the digital legacy feature which is kind of like the death vault stuff right this is coming they they teased it but it didn't come out with 15 so we'll be getting this soon so you can have you know put your beneficiary of your data in there Mm -hmm. Yeah, the downside here is you have to show up with a death death certificate and like an access key. So <laughs> okay. I would like a duress option just in case, you know, I don't know, I was kidnapped or something like that mm -hmm. um, or just disappeared and gone missing where people can go and get my get my phone data and pull that faster and easier than having to, you know, wait for me to, oh, I don't know, die. Right. You know, <laughs> let's, let's <laughs> yeah. use this for maybe trying to get me some data faster so the cops can find me is all I'm saying. But baby steps, baby, baby steps. steps. So I was listening to the Accidental Tech Podcast this week, and uh, Marco was going on and on and on about his cases. And I mm -hmm. just kept screaming at him. I'm like, get this, get blah, 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 because I just bought a new case for my 
iPhone uh, 13 Pro. It mm-hmm. is the best case I've ever owned. Turns out it's from a company called Peel, mm-hmm. and uh, it is awesome. I got the uh, the super thin iPhone 13 Pro case clear. Nice. It's not so much even clear as that it's kind of silver, and it's got kind of a carbon fiber texture to it when you look through it. Mm-hmm. It's soft, but it's slick, but with enough grip where you can hang on to it, but it doesn't stick to your pocket going in. It is hands down the single best phone case I've ever owned in my life. Oh, I'm going to have to order one. Period. Yeah, okay. it is so good. It is so good because I, I've been putting together my my perfect Mac stack, you know, with getting everything new and updated so I don't have to do it for like three or four years. Mm-hmm. So I got the iPhone 13 Pro with a terabyte of storage. Mm-hmm. Good to go for a long time on that. Then I went out and I got this ultra glass full auto application designed only for iPhone 13 Pro screen protector, tempered glass, 6.1 inch, bubble free, 0.5 degree microgravity tech, anti-scratch, case friendly, full coverage on Amazon. <laughs> these, these these titles are going to be great today. It's one of those cheap glass things that, you know, you can put over the screen. Mm-hmm. I never liked them before, but because I'd always get bubbles and stuff. And this had like a... Um, uh, basically an installer thing that made it super easy with no bubbles. So I've right. got zero bubbles. I am covered on the front, covered on the back. That thing's going to last forever. Knock on wood. Uh, just don't drop it on wood. Broke tomorrow. Yeah, no shit. And for the new iPad mini I got, I got this ESR hybrid case compatible with iPad mini 6, 8.3 inch, 2021 detachable magnet cover, hybrid back shell, fully supports pencil two rebound series. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I got one of those because uh, it's got, it's basically kind of a nice bumper edge on it. The magnetic cover is garbage. I threw that out. Don't need that. Um, but I need it. I, I, I like holding it and I like want it to be protected. But the problem is it's big enough where it hurts your hand to hold all the way. So I'm like, huh, maybe this is one of those jobs for a pop socket. So I got a cheap pop socket. I got the pop sockets pop grip with swappable top for phones, tablets, black. Problem nice. with the pop socket is it does work perfectly with the iPad mini. It's great. Mm-hmm. You can hold it. It just rests on your fingers. Uh, it's nice, but the edges around the damn thing are so sharp that you feel like you're going to cut your fingers off every time you use it. So I'm in the in the market for a smooth pop socket. All right. But Okay, so the iPad's done now. Now I got the iPhone. Okay. I got the iPad and the, the 14-inch MacBook. I just got Apple Care Plus. I'm not putting any crap on my laptop. I, I'm not a, not a maniac. So I think between the iPhone, the iPad, and the, the new uh, MacBook, I'm good for like three years now in case something So breaks. you say, next week, well, all the new stuff that Jason orders. <laughs> There's nothing left to buy. <laughs> I, can't, I don't want a new iMac because I love this Samsung curved display that you got me to get. Yep. Um, this thing's fantastic. So, and it works great with the, the 14-inch MacBook. I don't even have... Uh, an audio interface anymore. I got rid of my uh, Mix Pre 6. I'm using a Shure MV7 now with uh, just straight into USB. Mm-hmm. So I can pick this whole, you know, kit up and go anywhere with it, like right. I'm going to, of course, but <laughs> it's great. So I think I've got everything dialed in for a while until next All week. Right. You're right when the next, until next thing week comes yes. out. <laughs> Ooh, something shiny. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did get uh, the Ninja AF101 Air Fryer 4-Quart Black Gray this week because mm. my old air fryer that my family got me was the size of a trash can. Right. And I, I wanted something smaller that I could just, you know, pop out, pop in because we were just – we just have no space here for, you know, kitchen gadgets. I got to mm-hmm. say I love it. It's like 89 bucks. Gets the job done. Does uh, my tater tots, my bacon – Brussels sprouts are great in it. Highly recommend Brussels sprouts. All sorts of everything that everybody uses an air fryer for. This is a really nice one. So cool. And we talked about air purifiers for the house before because you have the super ding dong Dyson, right? Yes. Yes, I do. Two of them. Yeah. Okay. So that's what? 1200 bucks right there? Something ridiculous. Yeah. So I got the Lavoit air purifier for home allergies, pets, hair, in bedroom, H13, true HEPA filter, 24 dB filtration system, cleaner, odor eliminators, ozone free, remove 99.97% dust, smoke, mold, pollen, core, 300 white. <laughs> Thanks, <Okay>. guys. <laughs> um, 100 bucks. Nice. Works great. Okay. I can buy 12 of these for, <laughs> for the Dysons. I did not make that purchasing uh, option. That was not That was not me, so... Okay. I would have gotten something cheaper. I probably wouldn't even have an air purifier, to be honest. But oh, uh, they I, yeah. But I do. You don't have pets. And I have though. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It works really good for pets because uh, I have to. I clean mine every week because they 
typically full. We also have a, a wood fireplace in the in the winter w- that we use every day, right? And they are key key for that. I mean, my other ones are I've got these big tall. Um, they're not Hewlett Packard uh, Honeywell. These big Honeywell mm-hmm. air purifiers. So, I mean, we got really pure air now, except when you go outside because it's California and the air sucks. But um, <laughs> these little voids are good. And I found out that a couple of my friends also have them and uh, swear by them with, you know, with the allergies. So 100 bucks for those. Check them out. And they have sleep mode, too. So they turn off all the lights and uh, like turn it down way low. So it's still going. But, yeah, they're good. They're good. Okay. And cool. And finally, in app news, Spotify mm-hmm. is finally letting you block other users. Okay. And, I saw this come through on Engadget, and I'm like, I didn't know there were Spotify trolls that needed to be blocked. Did you? No, I did not. But uh, I don't use my music player as a social network. Yeah, me either. The last, I, I actually should turn that off. I, I don't want it, people to know what I'm listening to. I don't. I don't care. I really don't care. What was the <laughs> Apple one that that died on the vine? Oh, yeah. ping, ping. Ping. Yeah, that's right, because it, it made no ping. sense what the name was. <laughs> yeah. Built into iTunes. That was so stupid. Yes. Security? Ha! We are here again with Mr. Dave Bittner. Dave is the host of the CyberWire podcast, co-host of the social engineering podcast, Hacking Humans with Joe Kerrigan, co-host of Caveat with Ben Yellen, where they discuss law and policy and surveillance and privacy. And finally, he's the co-host of Recorded Future, where he takes you inside the world of cyber threat intelligence. Good morning, Dave. Hello, gentlemen. Good to be back. Everybody doing well, I trust. Yes, of course. Yeah, now let's for the construction outside. Oh, yes. It's great. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing you're not much of a complainer, Jason. No, not at all. <laughs> Wouldn't be a day that ended in Y if Jason wasn't pissed at something. <laughs> That's right. That's oh. right. These uh, are the people that had the, the Property Brothers in. So apparently the Property Brothers didn't do a very good job. Ooh, so. shocker. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I did see the episode, too. And they're, they're oh, yeah? talking, they were talking about how much they love their new forever home. And I just wish it was their never home because I don't like my neighbors very much. But... <laughs> They don't listen to this show. My understanding so. <laughs> with all those shows is that they're built just to so that everything lasts long enough to be filmed and then it all falls apart. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Then you have to go yeah. in and redo it. <laughs> yeah. And their num- their numbers are so off. Like we, we watch the estimates on what they did because we watched the episode and um, the, the cost that they put into the fixes that they made were just astronomical. And you have to pay hmm. for that for being on the show. All you get is free labor and screen time. Mm-hmm. That's it. Hmm. Yes. Well, let's get to the important stuff that we're here for. Uh, did you get, take a look at the <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi series? We got our first look, which is a couple stills, basically, but I'm very excited. Yes. Yes. Just a little glimpse. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, too, am looking forward to it. Uh, I think the series, uh, of course, the Mandalorian and uh, the Boba Fett series, mm-hmm. uh, I think they are they, they are our only hope uh, <laughs> for new Star Wars content that doesn't suck. I'm, I'm so. very excited for them to, <laughs> uh, to, to CGI Mark Hamill as a baby. It's going to be awesome. Hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe we can get a, another a better. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe they can motion capture him and put a, his face in there. But they, yeah. they, you know, they are teasing another lightsaber duel between Obi Wan and Darth. So we shall see. I'm very excited. Hmm. Yep. But you know what I did this morning, guys? Hmm. Hmm. I watched a 20 minute video on rollerblading. So. <laughs> yes. Yes. Victory is mine. <laughs> asshole. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> and I was and <laughs> I was wondering why Jason ordered the neon colored shorts from uh from Amazon. Now I know he's <laughs> yeah, getting he's getting yeah, into it. Parachute pants. <laughs> That's yeah, right. Pa- <laughs> oh, this video made me angry. Made me okay. angry. Go ahead. Uh, Why? Because obviously this guy's a rollerblade fanboy. So, oh, uh, well, I don't think one the, would make a twenty not that twenty-two anything minute wrong with that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think somebody would make a twenty-two minute video about rollerblading unless they were Jason. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you're all right, Dave. I think his timeline's off. I, I think yeah. it was lacking in a lot of information, especially about skateboarding. <laughs> That's and, what I thought too. Yeah, that's what my was my sense, and that's why I wanted to check in with you on it. Yeah, yeah. This is just poor journalism, in my opinion. Uh, okay, I the skateboarding stuff that he was talking about it. 
it, it what didn't go down like that. And I don't think it, since I know that that didn't go down like that, I can't trust what he said about rollerblading went down like mm-hmm. that. So as a rollerblader, you said that you thought some things were wrong. So um, what, what what do you think was wrong about it besides well, all the actually, spandex and no, my my sense? Yeah, my sense was that the skateboarding stuff was was what he got wrong. I felt as though the timeline on the skateboarding stuff was was wrong in that in my mind skateboarding definitely came first and established that that they had the beachhead for all of that culture stuff. He does I cover that. Though. Right. No, he, he he covered that, but he he got his timeline a little bit wrong because skateboarding basically started in the fifties. It did get bigger in the sixties and seventies in Dogtown when surfers basically made the move. When there were no waves, they would skate, and then mm-hmm. you know in the um, uh, in, there was a drought in California where all the pools got uh, basically you know emptied. There was no water for the pools, so skateboarders discovered pools, and they you know that whole thing started with you know like I get Dogtown and Z Boy stuff. But um, I think I think his numbers on how unpopular skateboarding was. I mean, it definitely took a huge dive, but vert skating mm. took a dive. Street skating was alive and well. Mm-hmm. Um, not not at, at the you know the scale of rollerblading obviously because skateboarding was a crime everywhere and we were underground we were punk rockers and you know screw the man fuck the establishment but and, and <laughs> definitely no neon definitely no neon spandex there's no yeah. spandex in skateboarding but no my um, my take is that skateboarding was a movement and a cultural thing and really rollerblading was mostly a fad yeah yeah I think so yeah. Yeah, so, and then there's still people who who rollerblade today. I see people around who do it for exercise, but the whole, you know, it 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 rose quickly and burned out brightly. And uh, that, that's there's still the way a fad works, but they're still definitely keeping the candle burning in Venice Beach. Lots of rollerbladers there. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great workout. I have to say, I I I enjoy it. Low impact, all that kind of stuff. Not as easy as it used to be on the, in these. Old bones and joints, but uh, I still do have a pair, and every now and then I strap them on and and tool around the flat parking lot. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm not not skating down any stairs anymore or <laughs> going for speed runs, but uh, but I enjoy it. It's it does clear my head. Yeah, that's good. That's good. And we got a uh, we've got an article here from Nosek who gave this to us on Discord. Um, it's a story about the first kidney shaped pool, which is a pretty good read. Hmm. It's worth okay. uh, it's worth diving into, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, is it? It was kind of a half-assed history, I believe. Maybe that's a good show to do: half-assed history instead of drunken history. We'll do half-assed <laughs> right. history. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, why not? Sure, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be the first. Um, yeah. I noticed uh, that uh, elsewhere in the show, you guys were talking about one of you got an air fryer or mm-hmm. was looking at an air fryer. Yes, mm-hmm. I got a replacement air fryer because the first one I got was like a first gen. My family gave it to me for Christmas and it was mm-hmm. the size of R2-D2 and oh. I didn't really have any place to put it. So I uh, I traded up and I got uh, a smaller one. I got a little Ninja air fryer, which is programmable and very nice and gets the job done very well. I make tater tots and bacon in it. Yeah. Well, I included a link here. Uh, I, too, bought an air fryer. I guess it was before the Christmas before COVID. Um, my wife had let it be known that an air fryer was something that she wanted uh, on her Christmas list from Santa. And so I went and did a bunch of research. And what I learned was that air fryers are basically just convection ovens. They're, yes. Yeah. There's nothing magical about them. Um, and so I'm, I'm linking to this review from the folks over at Wirecutter about they claim that the best air fryer is not, in fact, an air fryer, but it is a convection toaster oven by Cuisinart, which is the one I purchased. And I have to say, probably in the whole time that we've been a family, this is the best kitchen appliance we've ever purchased. In terms of the amount of use it gets, um, as an over, it's an oversized uh, toaster oven, which means there's all kinds of things you can cook in there that previously you would have cooked in your real oven. Right. So it really saves you from having to fire up the real oven, and uh, because it's a convection oven, like you were saying, Jason, tater tots, bacon, all that stuff just cooks up so much better in a convection oven than a, in a real oven or a toaster oven. So. If it's something you're interested in, uh, two thumbs up from the Bittner household on this Cuisinart uh, toaster oven slash air fryer. Uh, it's been really, 
really great. Okay, good. Yeah, we've got a smaller toaster oven with with a convection oven in it, but it doesn't have the same power as just a standalone. So it takes mm. takes twice as long. But you know, I I, I never put it because mine has a. It's built for pizzas as well. Like so, you can put mm-hmm. a you know a thirteen inch pizza in it. <laughs> Because right. it's got like a, a round back on it and everything. I never put it. I never put it on convection with a pizza. I wonder how that would work. Crispy. Hmm, I don't know. You probably get nice crispy crust on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, now that we've talked Star Wars rollerblading and air fryers, I almost think we should just wrap it up. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> here is a little bit of security news. I did find this one pretty interesting. The FBI appears to have been used as a pawn in a fight between hackers and security researchers. According to Bleeping Computer, the FBI has confirmed intruders compromise its email servers on the uh, November 13th to send fake messages claiming recipients had fallen prone to data breaches. The emails tried to pin the non-existent attacks on Vinny Troya, the leader of dark web security firms Nightline and Shadowbite. The nonprofit intelligence organization Spam House and its sister organization, the International House of Spam, quickly shed light on the bogus messages. So this is pretty interesting. They, they got into the FBI email mm. systems and uh, use it to kind of just start a fight, basically. Yeah, uh, the FBI, of course, has egg on their face from this. They put out uh, a terse message describing what had happened and saying that uh, this was uh, an email system that they used to communicate with partners, people outside of the FBI. So this wasn't an internal email server, according to the FBI. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, they're saying no internal data was at risk, nothing was lost, that sort of thing. But, yeah, about 100,000 emails went out that – appeared to be from the FBI because <laughs> they were from the FBI. They were from the <laughs> FBI's servers. Yeah. They, nope. they, that's where they came from. Yeah. Um, this whole thing with Vinny Troya, the guy who they're, the bad guys are trying to pin it on, evidently he's been the target of this sort of thing before. I don't know a lot about him, but I guess he's uh, a character who attracts that kind of attention from folks in the dark corners of the web. So yeah. that was pretty much written off. But um, other than that, it, it appears as though this was mostly one that was just kind of done for the lulls to embarrass the FBI and then go after this Vinnie Troya guy. Some people have pointed out it's a heck of a thing to basically burn an exploit on. Um, right. <laughs> you know, to imagine things people could have used this for. So I guess good news is the FBI found out about a vulnerability in their systems and it wasn't that bad, but, you know, still yeah. embarrassing for them. Yeah. I hope the Nigerian prince has locked down his email systems because, you know, if I ever got one that was really from his email, that would be something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This next story I put in here, this is a, a series of um, sort of nested Twitter uh, items. It started out with a, a gentleman named Jason Kint. Um, and he's tracking the fact that he deleted his Facebook account uh, in the beginning of October and Facebook has been pestering him to try to reactivate the account, of course. Mm-hmm. And he's been really deliberate about not touching the account in any way because he was under the understanding that if you touch that account in any way, Facebook will consider that to be activity and will cancel the deletion. Yes. Yep. You can't even look at it sideways. <laughs> yeah. So he's been tracking that and uh, evidently, you know, Facebook, he's he's planning on going after them for privacy violations. But uh, another interesting thing here that uh, someone commented, uh, someone named Liz Fong Jones, she said, here's another fun one. I deleted my Facebook account in 2011 after Google Plus launched. Five years later in 2016, I attended an event at Facebook office and RSVP'd with my email address. Lo and behold, on the kiosk, I was presented with name and photo from my deleted account. Nice. <laughs> yep. Visibility yep. set back to one, apparently. Well, that's that's why I put this in here, because that's what you guys always say. And shocker. It's true. <laughs> Everybody that's deleted their Facebook accounts will already have avatars waiting for them in the metaverse. Trust me. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Uh, I don't for no particular reason. I, when I was poking around today, it might have been when I was looking at that uh, air fryer thing. It struck me that. I think since I started using the Brave browser, um, I do not see ads following me around like they used to online. How how many bats do you got now, Dave? How many bats? Yeah. What are are Brave attention tokens. Brave attention tokens. Their entire browser is tied into crypto now. You can't can't (gasps) fart using the Brave browser without getting a crypto token. 
Well, that's mostly true. But I, all right. So I just fired up a new page here and it says brave rewards, earn tokens and give back. And there's a button that says start using rewards. So I've never pressed that button. So as far as I know, I do not have any brave rewards. Uh, much, much like not I doing any activity ad. with your Facebook account. I'm, I'm sure you're getting brave <laughs> yes, rewards. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I know, I know. But that said, uh, uh, the reason I, I started using Brave, the reason I started experimenting with it and I've stuck with it is that I needed a Chromium-based browser because this tool that we're using right now, Riverside, to mm-hmm. record ourselves needs a Chromium-based browser. And I wanted something that was disconnected from Chrome proper because of all the tracking and stuff that Chrome does. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brave seemed to uh, fit that bill um, so, yeah, I do see this stuff about the crypto stuff, but I've just sort of been whistling past that graveyard, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would uh, I would recommend uh, trying Vivaldi because they have multiple levels of security that, with tracking. You can you can pick a couple different levels of tracking that you can allow or disallow all of it. I barely get followed by anybody anymore. It is Chromium based. It is not tied to Google in any way, shape or form. And their latest versions are fast and are incredibly feature rich with a bunch of really cool stuff in it. Yeah. So All right. I got to say that uh, Vivaldi right now for me, since it's just so damn fast and lightweight, is great. You know, I because I went to I was at Vivaldi, then I went to Brave, and mm-hmm. um, I just got sick of all the crypto crap. And then went back to Vivaldi, and uh, they upgraded it quite a bit since I was gone. It's good, and uh, all the new tools that are in it are just fantastic. It's good, fantastic. and it's good. Yeah, it's good definitely... on Mac and PC too, because I'm using it on both. And I have to say, I actually the PC version of Vivaldi is phenomenal. It's just it's so fast. Yeah, it's fast, okay. fast, fast. All right, I'll check it out. What when what, what um when you say all the crypto stuff was bothering you on Brave? What do you mean? Uh, every time you go to, you have to turn it off manually on any install. And even if you're doing sync across multiple machines, you have to go in and turn off all that like start page crypto crap. Um, they're always, and now that they're, you know, they're literally tied in with crypto uh, with mm-hmm. the Solana thing. Um, yeah, I just, I, you can't trust them. And plus they were mining stuff in the background for a while. Uh, that was mm. one of the first kerfuffles with them, you know, so mm-hmm. There's just there's too many red flags around that browser for me to okay. you know to recommend it to anybody and that's what I was saying earlier in the show that I feel I feel guilty for actually you know recommending it before because it is definitely not a great piece of software. Yeah. All right, I'll check out Vivaldi. That's a good good tip. Thank you for that. You're very welcome. And in my final story, I put this one in security because I thought it was interesting. Um, this is a Vice article called Inside an Online Community of People with Microchip Implants. Mm-hmm. Now, when this whole thing started, we made fun of it quite a bit, you know? And uh, <laughs> there are people I'm now. Sorry, I just get, uh, I've, I'm just thinking about furries, but go on. <laughs> You think about furries, I'm like, I don't the know number how of the beast. What six, six, kind six. of implant you're talking about, but. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I guess many things remind me of furries, but but I digress. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, these people, like some of them have, you know, 20, 30 implants in them at this point. And hmm. uh, one person says, I use my microchip to store my medical records and work portfolio as well as to use it as a crypto wallet and unlock doors. I'm like, OK, they're going to chop your arm off to get your NFTs now <laughs> because there's nothing keeping that thing from just being pulled out. I know this because my dad used to tell me horrible stories about Chicago in the 70s and 80s about wearing a Rolex on the L and people would literally get their arms chopped off because it was faster than actually trying to hold up, hold somebody up and steal their watch. Yikes. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty big, uh, you know, community around this thing. And they're using it for, I mean, it's a lot of it's beta technology and a lot of it is, you know getting end of life to, you know, the RFID things die on them. The antennas suck, the software, you can brick your implant. And then I got to thinking, I'm like, Hey, why don't they just make all of the, you know, the chips external and, you know, use the, the actual microchip in the body as kind of an authentication token. So when you put it on, then you have, you know, access to all of the chips so you can log into different things, but then you can program them, upgrade them and things like that. And then, you know, it dawned on me, Wait a minute, we have Apple Watches at this point, so right. isn't that the same damn thing <laughs> that, almost yeah. without having to inject yourself? Yeah. Yeah, but I think That's the thing for these people is they like the fact that they've done this. 
Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to watch. They want to be able to to go to a bar and say, I've got a chip in my arm. Yeah, I'm Mm -hmm. a cyborg. Yes. You know, because you can forget the watch, but you can't forget your chip. Right. They want to be on the way back from lunch with their coworkers and they want to just hold their wrist up to the little scanner thing and have the door unlock. And and most importantly, they want everybody to say, how'd you do that? Yes. Are they, you a wizard? No, I'm right. just weird. <laughs> right. Uh, I agree. I think there's not much here that doesn't isn't accomplished by an Apple Watch. Um, maybe an, an authentication factor that apple watch on its own doesn't have but you know Mm -hmm. it has a password on it but uh some sort of biometric verification but uh yeah yeah, i mean i I think you're right i think it's just a thing for i mean why you know hey if you want to put stick something inside your body that does cool electronic things more power to you yeah um but yeah yeah i I don't i don't (laughs) don't see this taking (laughs) off (laughs) I don't, right. It's, like, it's not like there aren't much more practical alter- alternatives to this. I, I've as spent, you say, Apple Watch. I, I've spent most of my life trying to avoid having objects shoved into my body, so I'm, I'm going <laughs> to yes. continue that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More about your don't furry prude, convention Brian. next week. Yes, I understand. <laughs> Although I'm pretty, sure do, I, 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 I'm pretty sure we did do uh, uh, hacked butt plugs at one point. So yes, we maybe did. They, <laughs> of course we of did. Course, <laughs> of course we did. God. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I would like. Here could, we go. I was thinking like, could you? No, no, no. Oh, God. Uh, like, how about a tooth filling? Could you? Would that be a good place to put an implant? like this or a, or a false tooth or uh, I think it needs know, to be close enough to the reader inside your body right right you yeah. know because they said like two to three millimeters so it's got to be pretty close that's why that's why they keep it close to the skin in mm-hmm. different parts so, but yeah right so it really needs to be in the fleshy parts of your hands I guess yeah yeah because you might look kind of weird trying to stick your mouth over a <laughs> card reader <laughs> I'd pay good money to see that. <laughs> well, people do want attention. These people do want That's attention, right. so. That's right. Yes. That's right. Sure, I can pay with Apple Pay, but I got to suck on the card reader for five minutes. By the way, no never, problem. never yeah. ever let Bob open the door for you. I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I am really popular at nightclubs, though. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait. Oh, no, no, no. I can't even go there. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and stop. <laughs> let's just stop there. <laughs> Probably a good time to wrap up, gentlemen. Yeah. This week on security. <laughs> Ooh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Security. What? <laughs> Closing shout outs. Over at Patreon, we've got Thomas. Thank you, Thomas or Tomas. Thank you, Tomas. And at PayPal, we have Miles, Shari, Natalie, Linda, Derek, Andrew, Nathaniel, Dag, Edward, and Ramsey. And over at Stripe, we've got Ann Q and Sean M. All right. And we have a new five-star iTunes rating from Granny Dar. It was time to show my appreciation again. It's been two years now that Grumpy Old Geeks has been my go-to for making housework less of a chore. It was sad when you guys went to once a week, although understandable. Cleaning days are twice a week, and you had me covered. Sorry about that. (laughs) It was a hard decision whether to listen to you while cleaning upstairs or wait till later in the week when I did the downstairs. However, the upstairs (laughs) won as I was less likely to be bothered by my child husband. Literally? A child <laughs> husband? Hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll dig there. Damn. I always learn something new, often something bizarre, something sometimes discover something to add to my shopping list, and I'm thoroughly entertained by the banter between the two of you. The inclusion of Dave B for security segments, mostly, is truly a delightful experience after one manages to get all of over all the unnerving information. It's a bit like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde performance. One never knows where those conversations might go. Grumpy Old Geeks is an honest, insightful, irreverent, and revealing. It's something to look forward to once a week. Thanks. Thank you so much, and uh, get back to the vacuuming. <laughs> Thank you for that very detailed review. And yes. I, I, I'm sorry about your, your child husband. That sounds yes. disconcerting. Yeah. Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. If you enjoyed the show, visit GOG.show slash donate to help us keep the lights on, and we'll love you forever. We are a mostly fan-supported show, and we need your support. You can also help us out by sharing the show with your friends and enemies. It is absolutely free to do that. Press that share button. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 531. 
From there, you can find links to everything we talked about in this episode, as well as links to our swag and Discord channel if you want to buy some stuff or chat with us and other show fans. You can head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a snarky review and preferably five stars. Stay grumpy.